<laughs> wow, what's going on there? I have a stomach ache. I did a laser today and they gave me a Vicodin and I think I Benton said I took it on an empty stomach, so common side effect. What's that common side effect? Stomach okay. Pain. Okay. Well, Benton's right. What's fucking new? Uh, and so oh. I just have to lie down. So I'm sorry about my weird background and that I look like I'm in chemo. <laughs> no. Two most gorgeous women I've ever seen. And I'm just like, eh. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Feels Good podcast. I'm Amanda Cerny. And this is Jacqueline Fernandez. Hey, can you guys like pull it together and put some makeup on and look pretty? It's oh, okay. shit. Sorry. <laughs> <That's the worst laughs> thing. And as you can see, our guest for the week <laughs> is Whitney it's, Cummings. It's, it's sure to make fun of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up comedian, producer, writer, actress, um, animal activist. Uh, you're just everything and anything you're amazing at. So the uh, <laughs> list would be very long. <laughs> professional like lie downer on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never done this before. And it's a test. I love it. It's a testament to our friendship. Like this is that I'm doing this and I feel no shame or embarrassment. I hope people are inspired. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And Put by the way, terms when you can show up the best way you can. I, I'm like so many people would have just canceled and yeah. you did it. Amanda, oh, I cool. never cancel. <laughs> you know that about me. Yeah. That's why, another reason why I love you so freaking much. Like <laughs> I canceled on Amanda to make plans for about eight months. <laughs> she did. But I, knew, I knew we were going to be close friends. And I was like, I don't have time for this right now. I know we're going to just like we're gonna suck up so much of each other's time let's just do this in a year but the thing is <laughs> your, your her cancellations jacqueline they weren't yeah. like um just because she didn't want to do at least i i think because she didn't want to do things it was because she actually had like real shit she had to do that like took priority to it because she's a businesswoman. of course so, there's like yeah. so much on your plate there's so yeah, much I is the best thing for the other person. It's the best thing for you. I'm not going to show up half-assed, resentful, tired, like overworked, fitting you in. Hey, okay, let's just do the thing. It's like you, this, yeah. you invited me. This was like, why did you? I, I can't stand it when people show up to a meeting or an appointment we've had for like, a month, and they're like, "I'm yeah. like, you, you, I scheduled time. <laughs> I went. I ate. I went. Wait, don't sit up. Don't sit up with me." my skin just falls off from my laser uh, which, treatment. yeah which you're doing you said the halo laser can you tell halo us about laser. it i'm dying to know i'm obsessed with this stuff i did the halo laser okay so the first thing i did uh was there's this machine you're telling me it's not necessarily great where they um <laughs> put a machine on your abs oh yeah and it yeah and it's equivalent supposedly to like 200 sit-ups or something. Yeah. Uh, Whoa. And I was telling uh, Whitney that it's good when you do it with um, movements and like workout movements. Not interested. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they do your butt. Whoa. That's cool. And That's hot. I'm totally sore the next day. Like my back hurts. I'm exhausted. I'm Look at the booty. Yeah, the booty shakes. Yeah. So wait, how often do you have to do this? I think you have to do it five times. In, I mean, I haven't, you know, done the whole thing yet five times in like three weeks or something. And then okay. you still work out like, you know, um, Amanda saying, and you still, you're not, you know, a total sack of garbage. And then <laughs> I did the hail. Oh, you could also do it. I did it on my arms for the first time today. What? Really? Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you look like <laughs> you're just all strapped up. <laughs> yeah, I just was like turn me uh, work into out for the day done. Don't you, like, turn me into Wonder Woman. I don't give a shit. Are you allowed to show boobs on this, or will we get canceled? Uh, we might. Oh. YouTube might not allow it. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so this was the Halo laser. Let me try to get my boobs out of it. Um, they're kind of covered. Just do that. Yeah, if I just do this, hold on. Okay, can you kind of see? Oh yeah, it's like it's a little blown out. Yeah. Uh, oh, nipple. 
So, sorry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, yes. where are you doing it? On your neck? On my neck, and I'm going to do my face also oh. uh, next week. And they basically just set you on fire, um, and it makes more collagen. We'll see. And then this is like after you can kind of see but your skin right now is glowing like you have such amazing skin thank you i do a lot to it but you can kind of see the yeah. red you see the red outline yeah so, such a pretty picture too like i know uh, you look so hot i was, yeah. on, I was on vicodin that's like <laughs> but, relaxed apparently but yeah i do i'm not wearing um foundation right now because i just couldn't do it but um i oil my skin all day i have oil around me at all times i do it constantly i when i wake up in the middle of the night to pee i have oil there i put oil on i reapply in the middle of the night um i sleep in headphones that look like amanda's wearing so that my product doesn't rub off on my pillow i <gasps> sleep back down facing up um never put my face on a pillow ever 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 um and always so difficult upward motions only i see people putting on makeup and sunscreen going down with their sponges and down and pulling up only so i grew up um with horses and i had to clean saddles and i had to um polish saddles and i learned to treat your skin like a piece of leather you don't ever want it wet i never put water on my face or body unless there's oil involved before i go in the pool before i go in the, the bath has oil you never let uh your face be wet for any reason it it's, swells it's just gonna know it's gonna dry it out and parch it think about a piece of leather you want to keep it oiled up moisturized out of the sun and never uh water damage look what water does think about a piece of wood or a piece of leather and think of your skin like that only mm -hmm. upward motions when we're putting on anything makeup anything only up even the neck people go like this when they're it drives me even with my legs and my arms only up what is this people are pushing their skin down yeah, oh no, gravity. that's exactly. But wait a minute. When I was doing these gua sha, um, like exercise, like no, those like th those um treatment, they like they were like, oh, you have to keep doing this. You have to no, keep doing no, this. Like bad, it's like bad. wrong direction, wrong direction. Up only up only. I it's think they own rubber band. Up I think they were saying that um for lymphatic drainage because like uh, they they were saying it's here, but it's also up here too. So and also people are wrong. Like yeah. also I'm not. <laughs> I'm not clowning on them, but I've gotten so much bad advice. Like I don't even get facials anymore because it's all about digging in. It's all about squeezing zits. It's all about like, like hands. Oh on my God. No, it's hands. I was just scheduled for a facial today. <laughs> Why? You can do it yourself. You can't put oil. Yeah, on but I have so I have, I feel like I have so many things like that. I want to like re remove yeah, as in, oh, I know we I all have like blackheads and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But that's on you. So that's like on scrubbing, exfoliating, use the uh, lotion P90 or the P70, exfoliate, scrub. What's, what's P90 or P70? Uh, it's a biologic research. I can't believe I'm giving you guys now. It's going to be sold out and I'm never going to be able to buy it. But <laughs> stuff, you don't need someone else's dirty ass fingernails to squeeze out your blackhead and then put a bunch of oil in it. And then you're going to go out in the, in the pollution. People get facials, they open up their pores, they steam their pores, they squeeze a bunch of shit, and then they go out in the Miami air and all the pollution and shit just gets stuck to their face. After facials, I break out so much more. Yeah, oh I think God. Too. It's just so yeah. shit. your face is porous and it's made of tiny little holes. So if they're gonna open up your pores and steam your pores, and then you're gonna go out and drive in your car and touch your face and put shit on it, it's just like <laughs> I, I I quit doing that a long time ago. It's such a racket. So but I, I know what people are thinking right now is you're saying oil on your face. And when people think of oil, they're like, it clogs your pores. Yep. yep. No, but uh, actually, it took me a long time to learn this because I was the same way. I have been on Accutane twice, full disclosure, when I was 16 and when I was 21, which shrinks your oil glands is what it's supposed to do. But it didn't really work for me because I had cystic zits. And uh, I, was yeah. my, I was at war with my skin and I was squeezing and 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 um uh uh what's the stuff uh salicylic acid and zit cream and toothpaste and i was just like and you're making it worse and when you squeeze you're actually making a deeper um uh hole the other way mm. so you if you're gonna squeeze you go from under and out we tend to do this and then it just goes deeper that way right so i didn't understand any of that but i was constantly trying to dry my skin out which exacerbates it makes it worse and finally a dermatologist explained to me that when you put oil, the more oil you put on your skin, your oil glands stop producing as much oil because they don't need to. 
So you're actually oil on your oily skin is good. So my skin finally got oh. good when I started lubing it up all the time because my <laughs> my overactive oil glands were like, we need to produce oil because they're so dry. And then I get these cystic clog things, you know? Yeah. So there's absolutely no foundation on your face right now. There's no foundation on my face, but I do have on, um, eyeliner and, um, lip. Look at those eyes. Lip How stuff. clear is your skin? Like you don't even have any, like I have marks. A, well, I have, this is happening. I've got, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's, that, yeah, that, but that so. still doesn't, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, skin it's is so clear. I work like, so hard at it. I'm not one of those people that's like, I just this is my like. I work so fucking hard at it. And before I put my makeup on, I wash my hands. Like I, I lubing up all day, constantly sunscreen. I wear gloves when I drive. I wear hats all the time. Like it is a hustle. Three questions. Um, what sunscreen do you use? Do you use like a mineral one? Yeah, no, I just, a lot of it is just like, it's trash. Like so much stuff is just trash. I use right now the Shiseido, um, uh, oh, the, the well, how do you pronounce it, ben, uh, Benton? Uh, Ch Chancatonel, but also Ch Ch Chantiquet. Chantiquet, the one that's in the tube, a makeup artist used it on me. It's really- Oh, I heard gooey. that's really good. It's really gooey. Yeah. And amazing. I like the super goop also. I do too. I like super goop. And then oh. I like all my, um, uh, foundations, uh, have sunscreen, you know, and it's just, yeah. And then in my car, I've got uh, the spray for your hands, the aerosol spray. That's got an owl on it. The spray. Oh, oh wait. I know that, Brian. I forgot the name. It hasn't the one of the owl. Even I forgot that. Beach bum, beach bum. Oh Next. yeah anything kind of natural that's like a aerosol spray as soon as i get my car spray my hands go to my appointment get back in my car spray my hands like spray my neck and this side of your face is always when you're this is this is what happens when you're driving just you're getting pounded by sun on this side so mm. get back in the car spray it pat it i used to do new face i can't believe i just remember this the new face machine um i used to do the new face machine always in traffic every day all day really that's oh I used to do it on airplanes. What is that? I love that machine. It's what a, is it? a microcurrent. Uh, yeah. I just, you're in the car, you're sitting there, you're on the plane. You're like, just, you know, just doop, boop, 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 just burning my face in public constantly in Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> I, but okay. And then how often do you clean your brushes for your makeup? Benton, how often do I clean my brushes? <laughs> Never. Every two seconds. <laughs> Never? I don't use a lot of... I don't have brushes. I don't oh, have brushes. fingers. I use my fingers. And then here, I just a little bit of blush. I don't put any, I never put blush all over or powder all over my face. That's why I'm so greasy. I don't, brushes are abrasive to the skin. Why? I bet Tim saying no. Uh, I, I don't, you were using a brush on me the other day. I felt like you were cutting me with a razor. Because <laughs> that's weird. Oh, not the worst. I, that is the worst when someone uses like a really bad brush. Oh my God. <laughs> Benton's over there like, I we're did not. Eyeliner that's like <laughs> sharpened and it's like hard and we're just ripping at our eyes. Like, here's the thing. I also made so many mistakes for so long. I did tanning beds in high school. I did Same. two tanning beds a day. Like I'm on borrowed time. Um, <laughs> I also did Althera once a year for like three years. And then I just did it again this year. Which that's is supposed to be really good though. Thermage and Althera are supposed to be like really good for collagen production and just like tightening of skin. I mean, I've like, I've seen people who've done it who have amazing results. And it's great. You can also do it on your arms. It's for loose skin uh, from mm. what I understand, or to it, it traumatizes your skin so deeply that it starts producing collagen. But you, I also did it on my thighs, my arm, my arms. Um, it hurts like all hell. It is incredibly expensive. So, I would just make sure it's like the right, your dermatologist is like, this is what you need. Like a lot of people want to do the threading stuff, but that's like, it's not time for that yet, you know? And people, mm -hmm. if a doctor tries to push something on you that you're not ready for yet, they're just trying to make money. So don't let, you know, don't let them do that. Like, check So how often are you doing treatments? Like how often do you go in for treatments? Not that often, really. I mean, I once a week, he goes once a week. <laughs> <laughs> But like you're all about like, <laughs> <laughs> like once a year. It's like bitch. Um, 
Yeah, I <laughs> once guess. a week. Well, because every will, other day. If I've got like a, a cystic thing, I'll get a cortisone shot. I get filler on this side of my nose. Um, uh, Is that you know, to even it out or something? Yeah, because it's it's really broken and I don't want to get a nose job and I don't really give a shit. So Why is it <laughs> broke? Did you, like, were you in an accident? It just, no, it was just, I mean, many, but it was not <laughs> that's the one thing that I haven't broken. But um, no, it's just really crooked and it's like a scoop. And when it's lit a certain way, it just looks oh. crazy. So I was like, I, I don't want to get a nose job. Let's just do the, the, they just said, let's do filler. So, but what I like about how you do things is that you try things, you like really analyze things and research things before you even do it. And then you create your own, like, this shit doesn't work list. This shit is good. And you challenge even the professionals of what they're doing with you. So it's you like, you're not advocate just for yourself. You got to ask questions especially women go into doctors and they th walk on eggshells like as if i'm bothering you like i'm paying <laughs> you you're gonna i'm you're not gonna rush me you're you're not gonna rush me out of here i have a list of questions that are written down on a piece of paper because you're gonna fucking frazzle me because you're gonna come in and you seem so busy and you're like okay what's going on and you're like why are you stressing me out i just sat in your waiting room for 45 minutes and you're trying to rush me out of here and you're probably going to be like, oh, it's just your period. Like, I'm not letting you rush me. You have to claim your space in there and go, what is this? What is this? I want to see pictures. So of the true. Before. I want to see the before and after. I want this. I want a blood test. I want proof. I want data. I why are you? Why? Behaving I'm as if they're they're doing us a favor. You work for me. I'm about to pay you three hundred dollars for fourteen minutes. Like I'm not doing this. So right. it took me a really long time to not be scared of and intimidated by doctors when I went in. Especially with women, they dismiss us so quickly, and they know they can fucking sell us anything. Especially if they're capitalizing our insecurities of like, does it make you look younger? And like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So this happens. What does that mean? When, how much time, how much, like, you know, and then we're, they're not fucking us. So they don't want to have to listen to our questions. Like there's no, so then you got to have to just be like, look, I'm, we're not dating. You're getting nothing out of this except my business. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to ask as many questions I want. But when did you start doing that? Was it just a natural instinct or was it like in business, you started doing it for yourself and then it kind of related into every aspect of your life? I am in almost 10 years in a 12 step program called Al-Anon, uh, which is uh, when you grow up in any dysfunctional home uh, and you are essentially a doormat and you walk on eggshells around narcissists and and try to pee or you're a people pleaser and a shapeshifter and you just want to make everybody else happy and then this program teaches you how to you know stand up for yourself and advocate for yourself and build self-esteem and you can't build self-esteem if you don't do esteemable action so i see a lot of people on instagram they're like love yourself and i'm gonna like when's the last time you did something for someone else like like doing being of service for for free with no strings attached like so there's a lot of service involved to build your self-esteem. Like I have low self-esteem. How are you going to get it? Well, it's not going to be thinking about how low your self-esteem is like, go do something for someone else. That's do esteemable action. So it took me a long time to sort of get out of my me, 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 my selfishness. How do I make myself better? Go take out your neighbor's trash because he's old, you know, go do something else. Um, that's, what's going to give you pride and respect yourself. Purpose. So people are only going to respect you as much as you respect yourself. It took me so long to realize like, like, cause I was just wanted everyone's approval all the time. And it's just, mm. it's needy energy. It's unattractive. People don't respect it. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, um, repellent when someone comes up to you and is like, hi, hi, can I, it's a fucking annoying, you know, <laughs> it's just like, it's not, it's obnoxious. There, um, there's that, that, that term, which is like over niceness where it's like, I, I know what you mean. Cause like, and I think like we are really sensitive to stuff like that. Just like human beings in general, like when someone's being overtly nice, it's like, it's just not natural. And it what seems like there's is a motive. She? Is she? It's just yeah. like, you don't have to, why are you advertising it? <laughs> just, just be it. You know, like you're advertising it. Just like, someone's like, how are you? I'm just like, hi. I, <laughs> I, I always like would be jealous of the people that are, I don't know if jealous is the right word, but of the people that, could do that, like just go into groups and just be like, ha, na, 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 like, and just like, <laughs> because I like, look at Whitney, look yeah. at Whitney's face, she's like, <laughs> why? Now, now I have to participate. Now I, <laughs> go, hi. Now it I makes me feel 
so like, it's so hard. I can't do now it. I have to cringe and now I have to act. Now I have yeah. to, you're making me, you're making, yeah. you're testing me in your shitty movie. So now <laughs> I have to like, oh, 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 oh. And like, <laughs> I'm like, then I was a bitch before. And then, and then everyone's seeing me be fake. So everyone's like, who's this person? Like, so. <laughs> The yeah. goal is just like when Amanda, when you come over, I'm like, Hey, what's up? And then I'll come see you. And I love it. I'll see you when I see you. Like I'm not, there's, Oh yeah. It's I'm not the best thing ever. Every time. Like I am, it's taken me so long to be the same person I am all the time mm. and know like, and it's actually working with, uh, training rescue dogs and working with horses has really helped me understand. Like when you respect yourself and claim your space, um, the no one's leaving. At least mm -hmm. the white yeah. people aren't. So I used to associate, hey, what's up with like, they're going to leave me, they're going to reject me, they're going to abandon me. If they do, that's that's on them. That's none of my business. And the way that prey animals and dogs work is they they have a thing and then they get over it. They have a <laughs> thing and they get over it. You know, there's no held resentment of like, well, she didn't say hi to me first and I got her a gift that was $30 and then she got me a gift that was $10. Like, they just don't think it. They don't calculate. They don't keep score. So yeah. I can only fuck with people that don't keep score or mm -hmm. hold resentments in. If you have a resentment towards me, that's your problem to solve because mm -hmm. you're running around stomping your feet and being mad and giving the silent treatment. Like, I'm not going to notice. Uh, like, and I'm, you're, you're taking poison and expecting the other person to die. That's it, taken me that. And I also did EMDR just real quick, which is a like a trauma that? therapy. Um, eye movement reprogramming and desensitization. If anyone has deep trauma in their childhood, alcoholic homes, abuse, abusive relationships, an accident, car accident, fire, something like that. Like it's a great and like check, check, check. Yeah. What do we do? Auditioned in Hollywood. Anything, <laughs> any trauma. Yeah. Um so the way that I'm gonna just explain it in layman's terms, because I'm a layman and I don't um I'm not a scientist, but it uh essentially the way our brains work is that you know a lot of people say like I have anxiety, I'm stressed out, I'm anxious, and they're not sure why. We should all be anxious. Everyone that's got anxiety, you should have anxiety right now. We're in a pandemic. Things are uncertain. Everyone should, everyone's like, we got to cure our anxiety. It's like, no, this is, your body is is doing the right thing given this. It would be weird if you weren't anxious right now. Mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of a yeah. tricky thing with anxiety. Um, but I movement reprogramming and desensitization. So when a trauma happens to us, so say, um, uh, uh, Amanda, this was what happened to me. So, uh, ish, uh, you're in, uh, it's Christmas morning. Or, nope. Bad example. Let's say you're at a restaurant, uh, Italian restaurant, there's a red tablecloth and there's booths with leather and there's candles and you're having a pasta and you're next to your, uh, your dad and your sister and a couple other, there's a family next to you, the Asian family next to you. There's a, you know, black family next to you, whatever. Uh, the, there's a fireplace, there's a chandelier, all that. So someone walks in who's drunk off the street, a homeless person comes in and fucking just like smashes something down and hits someone in the head and runs. It's just like a freak, freak trauma, right? A freak yeah. accident, just a weird, you almost get hit by a car coming out of the restaurant, whatever it is. And your brain uh, uh, freezes uh, and basically it, our brain freezes and we stop because that's our way to say, is the uh, stay as still as possible because the threat might just move past us. There's nothing to do right now, right? And then essentially our brain takes in about 3 billion pieces of information a second, feel, touch, smell, hear, everything. And when your brain freezes in trauma, everything that you're taking in files in the folder of trauma. And oh, this, this is, is this is dangerous. So yeah. you're sitting at a, you, there's a red tablecloth and you're like anxious and you're like picking fights with Johannes and you don't know why. And you're just like, I don't like being here. I don't like this person. And like, you you don't know why, but it's filed in your brain that like red tablecloth, like something bad's gonna happen and you need to be on oh. alert. It's your body doing its job to keep you safe. You know, the Asian family, the black family, you're like, okay, well, there's a, like, you don't know why you're freaked out. You're just freaked out, you know, or you're racist. Um, but uh, <laughs> you know, the the boot leather booths, like I just don't like these leather booths, like this fucking guy that I'm on a date with, like I don't like this guy, he's fucking weird. Like what's going on with you and your history and your file folders? and so what I move in and reprogramming desensitization does it eventually take those things out of the folder. My, one of my biggest traumas was on Christmas day in front of a Christmas tree. And I could not, 
I starting December, I would just be checked out. No Christmas tree, no Christmas, no holidays until like six years ago. I did the EMDR. Now it's like I'm Christmas all year round. The smell of Christmas trees, the candles, all at Christmas. I just like, I don't want presents. I don't get presents. We don't have Christmas parties. We don't like, I was just like, my brain was like, Christmas is not safe, you know? So, wow. So, what does the therapy do? Um, is it like meditation? It's not meditation. It's, um, uh, so it was, uh, discovered in the seventies by a woman um who uh it was a treat it's treatment for a lot of like um soldiers that have ptsd that come back from wars um and uh because they associate everything with trauma right so uh it's uh two uh you're holding something in both hands that vibrates and um uh you have to move your eyes back and forth as you describe the trauma of what happened and they prompt you and ask you questions of like okay the man came in and he grabbed you by the throat and you're like going back i mean it's it sucks it's hard and then it's wow. like what was on the walls what was, oh fuck there were, and i remember just being like and this thing happened and she's like what color was the carpet and i was like red oriental rug christmas christmas gift shiny christmas gift like i i was like oh my god that happened on fucking christmas you know like i had no i i didn't know i forgot like you black it out you know so it like walks you through it. And you're like, there's a dog. There was a, a small dog. There was a the staircase, and my sister was there. And there's two chair. Like you start to figure it out, and 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 then you take it out of the trauma folder. And then it's mm. like, I'm not. You know, it's a miracle. And clearing it, the cookies. <laughs> it, and you're in. You're clearing your cookies. Dude. Wait. Yeah. So I mean, like, then what would the difference between like therapy, like normal therapy? um and this then me oh normal this is like um this is like knocks out years of therapy <laughs> i mean it's like a shortcut normal therapy whatever that means most people can't afford it most therapists yeah. want you to stay sick i'm sorry drag it on but yeah i would say free therapy or 12-step programs everyone qualifies for either al-anon aca overeaters codependents you can get free medicine in 12-step programs um i think talk therapy in my experience, often re-embeds your trauma and it it fortifies the stories that you've told about yourself. I was abused as a kid and my mom was a bad mom. You just keep re-embedding shit that might not even be true. Just be yeah, careful, true. You know? So my, my the reason my therapist is, you know, such a genius is that she goes, you need to stop talking about that. That's not what happened. <laughs> like, you're not a victim. Like, you're not a victim anymore. So she would say, I'd be like, I just feel abandoned by my boyfriend. She's like, adults can't be abandoned. You have a car, you have a house. What are you doing? Oh, so I it's like, like she's just like cut it out, you know. And a lot of therapists will just sit there and let you just talk your drivel, and you know, get feel sorry to charge you a bomb. Yeah, I'm not. I like. I remember going to this guy when I, this, when I was trying to get out of a relationship, and he was always like, and I was like, should I leave? Should I say? He's like, it's premature. We just don't know. We're just gonna have to. And it was just like, I, I want someone to just say no. You're not doing this. Like, I just want to be like bossed around <laughs> by someone I respect. Yeah. And then I want to be given homework. So it's like, people are like, I go to therapy once a month. That's like going to your personal, like at the gym once a month. You're what, what you have to do every day, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's 12 step programs, reading, ACA big book, codependence no more. Like I got to do that every day. I got to do my outreach. I got to do my sponsorship. It's like extra, it's a muscle in your brain um, mm -hmm. to stay happy, you know? Um, so regular therapy, like, I'm, I know there's good therapists everywhere, but if your brain's not changing, if you're not making new neural pathways, like I was like, I want to stop apologizing so much. I'm so apologetic. Like all I do is apologize. And she's like, you don't get to apologize for 30 days unless you've done something wrong. It takes, that's how long it takes to make a new neural pathway. I don't want to complain anymore. You can't complain for 30 days. And when you do, you have to start over. So that's how you build neural pathways and break old habits. Mm. So, it's she's very neuroscience based she's very attachment strategy based um and uh you know she doesn't let anything slide you know she's 30 years sober and in codependence and she's just like that's not true that's not right and i'm like well this person was rude to me and she's like ah. yeah. <laughs> sounds like that person just kind of wanted to ask you a question and you were busy and you hadn't eaten lunch that day yeah she gets wow. you out of your like twisted thoughts yeah, yeah. So sort of like we got them honestly like we have these stories about ourselves all that stuff happened but we amplified it or minimized it based on what we needed our, our psyche needed to 
we can't blame our parents as kids because it's too traumatizing on the psyche to think that we're in the um, uh, uh, protection of people that are incompetent. So we have to blame ourselves. I'm not good enough. I'm not funny enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. Cause that's the only way we don't go insane. Mm -hmm. And then you get older and then you blame your parents for everything when they did not, in my opinion, I don't think any parent wakes up and is like, I want to be a shitty parent today. Like <laughs> they all did the best they could. And, and this program, uh, you know, has taught me like radical forgiveness. Like we forgive others, not because they deserve forgiveness, but because we deserve peace. And we've been trained to be resentful. We've been trained to hold grudges. We've been trained to be yeah. angry at people. And it just, it holds us back. Yeah. This, the crazy thing is with me, like me and Amanda were just discussing this the other day and we were talking about like, like the secrets to happiness because both me and her have a really bad memory. Okay. <laughs> like we just can't yeah, remember. Hold on. I'm going to stop you. That's a story that you're telling yourself. That's a narrative that I don't, don't talk about my friend like that. So it's like, <laughs> I have a bad memory. Like, okay. Says who? Says you? Yeah, like, this tells I just, me all I the don't time. remember stuff. <laughs> oh, maybe it wasn't important. Yeah. Or maybe you're not, you're not like. Amanda back can't remember the <laughs> first kiss. Uh, first time we had sex. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, you were fucking wasted who cares like this is true who cares so it's like but do you remember to fucking put out a video every week do you remember to fucking yeah. shoot 18 hours a day do you who who decided that remembering your first kiss is your hippocampus doesn't give a oh shit oh my god I didn't yeah, think you know about what? that <laughs> I love I love you, that you didn't get a check at the end that's why you don't remember it okay <laughs> so our brain remembers things when they get a dopamine reward or some kind of adrenaline involved our, our brain has no vested interest <laughs> in remembering it <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear. I love him. Get a I, no, you're gonna fucking minimize yourself and be like, I have a bad memory and I have a bad like get the fuck yeah. out of here, dude. I do. Oh, yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. Because you like doing? why are you why are you why are you like clowning yeah. on yourself like that? It's like you're yeah, one that's of true, prolific actually. people I've ever met. You remember to write, edit, and shoot 24 hours a day. And I can't remember to turn off my do not disturb or just. <laughs> and, um, and you're like leaning on this self deprecating thing of like, I have a bad memory. It's like, no, you just remember the shits that's important. You showed up today. You remember this. You're here. <laughs> you're right. Because, no, I like it. I mean, like, I don't even remember my childhood first kiss, my first kiss ever in my life. I don't remember. So maybe you're right. It's just like not a thing for me. I'm like, what? Well, no, or when you stop trying, it'll come to you. Or like, who? What? What do you need with that information? Just make it up. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's not really a tool I could utilize later. I guess. You get a check. Survival. In Remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Who gives a I, shit. I do remember my invisible wedding though. So that's my the only wedding I'm gonna have. But <laughs> <laughs> you had a wedding. Wait, that was what invisible? <laughs> oh, an invisible wedding. It's, it's like you guys didn't have one. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna say something else in a second about memory and music. But I used to take curtains and put them and stand behind them and then walk through them and pretend I was a bride and that would go over my head. What? <laughs> we now kiss the bride. Yeah, that's, like, <laughs> that's actually so cute. But oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. This is a new tool that I just kind of really discovered. Um, listening to old music, I have this playlist of just songs from when I was like 14, 15, 16 that I listened to on a loop. And Benton's going to like blow his brains out if he hears it again. Um, <laughs> the Alanis Morissette and Tori Amos. <gasps> And it jogs your memory. You'll start remembering things. Like I start remembering stories and shit that happened and things that were like, that my parents did that were awesome that I just was like, oh yeah, oh my God. We, this is when I went to the CD store and he bought me an Alanis Morissette. And we waited in line for, holy fuck. Like my dad yeah. nailed it. Like it helped me nice. old music or music that you listen to in your team. Make a playlist of just that music for you guys. It's like Ariana Grande or something. But no. um, <laughs> like <laughs> on and see really. what happens. Watch, watch my so-called life for me. Watch the shows that you watch when you're 15 and start seeing what comes back to you. Yeah. The Cosby That's show. Cosby show. Well, I, I was trying to do that. Sudoku. <laughs> I used to watch that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like 
that's off the air. For- I know. I So what do I do? <laughs> great show. It's a fucking great show. Martin was my favorite sitcom growing up. Uh, oh. That's- yeah, I used to watch that or Full House. I'll watch Full House. Full House. Yeah, Full House. Full House. To be. Yeah. I mean, I think there's an opening with Lori Loughlin gone. I feel like you could slide right in there. <laughs> so Whitney, do you have any upcoming projects? Anything that we can like talk about? Oh, she has her podcast. The Good Ooh, For I know, You yeah. podcast, which is actually amazing. Like imagine all the, and Benton as well, who's off camera right now. Yeah, but, uh, staring at me menacingly. <laughs> he's mm-hmm. like, let's play. Um, <laughs> but the, the feel, uh, feels good. That's ours. Good For You podcast <laughs> is you learn. So, I mean, I just learned so much from you even alone in this episode. And like, I yeah, talked- just now. So I was just like, like, yeah, wait a minute. I, I have a good memory. We're working on this. I talk too much. I just no. Like, you don't talk enough. I'm like, t- I literally have a notepad next to me. Or you taking- can listen back to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But then I have to go through <laughs> the whole episode again. I'm, I'm doing yeah. bullet points here. <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> Time I love management. That you take my shit, Amanda. I just <laughs> love that you just like take my shit. <laughs> I a. <laughs> never have to worry about your feelings. You're not like, I just, that's like, that's the kind of shit I live for is like showing that women can fucking go like be silly with each other. Yeah. And there's this, this stereotype that we're all catty and we can't get along and we can't make fun of each other. It's just not, there's this, this narrative that women are made of glass and we're so fragile and we can't fucking function. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, so it's it's just so cool that you let me be a bully. Oh my, I love it. It's my favorite thing. I think a <laughs> lot of a lot of my humor is in teasing others too. So that's what you I give enjoy. right. Well, because you give it right back to me. <laughs> yeah. like, that's family, you know. Yeah, I love it. And I like I'm always I always communicate or at least I try to communicate how I know you do this too, and I know we all do this, but communicate how I feel when I feel it. And oh. you did it like, with me once we shot a video and you text me and you're like, I don't think we should post this. Here's why. And mm-hmm. it was just like was so direct. So all business was like, yeah. got it. you're exactly right. And I would say just the flip side of that, Jackie's already heard me say this today to Gabby, which is like, um, feelings are facts also. So if you're in your emotions and you like want to confront somebody about something like, if you're coming from a place of emotionality, like give it a couple days. And then if you still feel the same way. So it's like, if, if you're coming from a visceral place, that's like, I feel uh, neglected or of, of, uh, left out or angry or triggered or whatever it is, that's not the time to go confront somebody, mm-hmm. you know, cause you're going, to, you're going to the problem for the solution. Come to the problem with a solution, which is here's what I need. Here's what I want, and here's why. Don't come uh, like I just feel like you didn't think like no one's listening. So true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's where you're calm. You're able to talk about something. Clear, calm, calm concise. Say yeah. what you mean. Mean what you say. Don't say it mean. Clear. Um, because you got about, in my opinion, if you need to confront someone about something, you have about thirty seconds to make your point. You yeah. have that's that's about the amount of time you have before you're gonna lose them. Mm. no email should be more than two sentences like you ha- like you the more you talk the less people listen which i need to learn i need to work on that say what just say it in one sentence what's the yeah. line oh i i think my mindset is when i when i see i want to explain my thought process so if i'm like yeah i know it we're not dating. people we're not dating. yeah <laughs> yeah when I, I'm like this, 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 because this and this, and then this, and then this that is the said, reason why. As a creator and as a boss, you do need to explain to people the target. Mm-hmm. So when someone says, why don't you do this joke? And you go, no, that's not helpful. Cause then they don't know what you want. No, because it's just too dirty. And this is going to be on YouTube and here's yeah. why. So then they're going to go, oh God, I know they need to know how you think. They don't need to know how you feel. Right. Yeah. No, that makes complete sense. No, that's yeah. I f- I feel like I I was actually in one of like the best therapy sessions right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know this this was better than therapy. This is what like, everybody needs right now. Like yeah. I can't tell you. Like I had a friend over the, the the other day, and she was talking to me about her ex, and she just found out that he just like committed suicide. You know, and I know it, it just got really dark, but it's just like people and 
where they're at mentally right now. It's such a struggle for so many different people. So you providing that information freely Mm -hmm. for people to go ahead and work on themselves and know that there is like a way out. And by the way, you have like, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but, um, the worst thing for us is isolation. Like it's our brain thinks we've been castigated from the pack and don't have protection of the tribe. Um, there's an app called clubhouse. It's not public yet where, uh, people can connect to each other would talk about anything they want and start rooms. Like people need to connect to each other. And right now we're being told we have to isolate and Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of looking at screens and looking at my own face and like, you know, that, um, I'm finding myself isolating a lot. Uh, the cornerstone of the 12 step programs is outreach and getting on the phone with someone and listening to their problems, not just stewing in your own. There's mm-hmm. always someone that has it worse than you. And as long as you're focused on how bad you have it, you're never going to have perspective and you're never going to be happy. People are like, I need to be happy. I need to be happy. It's like, well, you have all these things. Like the, the most successful people I know are miserable. And it's like, mm-hmm. cause you have nothing to compare it to because you don't, expose yourself to any other walks of life you're just in your own little bubble and you're like miserable and it's like cute and gets you attention or something like it's not cool to be unhappy like Mm. this is it's like wanting to change something about your i want to move my couch then move it and i'm like my couch won't move like you have to do it and it took me a long time that nobody owes you anything and you have to do it yourself and you can't sit around and wait for someone to make you happy and fix your problems it's just they won't who they can't even fix their own Mm mm-hmm especially when you can do it yourself yeah you have more power than you think there's yeah you, know, you have more power than you think stop waiting around for other people to solve your problems and, and make you happy and stop thinking that a meme on instagram or like an inspirational quote is going to change your childhood it's just not yeah like you have what's your favorite post. platform to post from like what platform do you enjoy being on the most i'm so bad at this shit i mean instagram <laughs> I like the most I, you think you're bad but you're actually amazing like yeah you have so many followers as well like I, okay all right <laughs> now you're just <laughs> no but you do no honestly she, she does now, you're being but, no no, no your, your content is raw it is because you, you what you do is you're professional you're a writer you're in traditional hollywood you're putting together like huge massive productions and then for social media, you show a side of your life that they don't get on in film and TV that they don't see. And that's what people really, and that's what makes them feel connected on social media. It's like yeah. the more raw, the more people are interested because it's real, it's authentic, and they can really like connect through it. And I think that's and why honestly, you're so great. A million plus anywhere. Like it's just, it is a lot of people. Wait, it's they're like, also real. I didn't realize people <laughs> fought, fought. They're also real people. So that, yeah. I looked at a bunch of people. I'm like, damn, they have so many followers. And then they've got like 5 million followers, but they get like 200 comments. And I'm like, oh, wait. So <laughs> wait a minute. It's fishy. <laughs> quantity. Stop trying to get the people that don't fuck with you. Just, just like it, you don't need that many people to be successful mm-hmm. you just need hardcore fans and you made a promise to them and you have to deliver every time and you have to be consistent and you have to become their addiction and uh you cannot spend all your time being like well i want more followers just fucking satisfy the ones that already fuck with you which is why it drives me nuts when people post benton's gonna pout at this but when they post their tweets on instagram i'm like I just saw it. I follow you. I'm just saying it. Why, why am I getting punished? Because I lo- follow you on all these platforms. Like, why I, are you- I will so, say. Make I'll a take- video that says, follow me on Twitter. Make a funny video that says, there, follow yeah. me on Instagram. Don't, don't sloppy don't second. Be- <laughs> but Whitney, some people use other platforms in different countries. that some don't. don't. <laughs> That's true. This why is why like you- Whitney? <laughs> <laughs> I saw, but I, by the way, I also you're Instagramming it. And I see that you tweeted it. I'm like, well, so now why am I going to go to your Twitter? You put it all here. Well, I have no incentive yeah. to follow you on Twitter now because you put all your shit here. That's true. You cannot you cannot post the same clips on every fucking channel. I stopped. You lost my trust. <laughs> I just did that today. I posted a TikTok to Instagram. Well, that <laughs> that I don't even know what you just said. So I don't know what that even means. But uh, <laughs> but you're on TikTok. But, but but by the way, TikTok. Benton pointed this out. How are people have five million followers on TikTok 
and the same person has 20 200,000 on Instagram or some ske sketchy about these uh, there's some oh, the numbers on TikTok is what you're I'm saying off like at the end of the day when this is all over and you get <laughs> tickets for a live tour are TikTokers showing up like are we selling out tickets like how does this translate at, to real it all just feels a little shady to me I, I thought the same thing, but then I started seeing like whenever I would shout out my Instagram on um, TikTok, <laughs> it, the kids weren't allowed to have Instagram. Oh, so it's really, yeah, it's really, really young. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they were like, my mom doesn't let me there. And it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> like children. Yeah, I don't fuck with children. So I won't. Yeah. I don't, and they'll find you on there, I though. I don't know what to say to them anyway, but um, <laughs> yeah. And you also have to like, for me i'm like i'm gonna stay in my lane i can't try to keep up with stuff that you know i'm not relevant in like i don't like i'm glad i'm older i'm wiser i know what i have to offer like i can't keep chasing like now i'm a youtube star and now i'm a makeup tutorial person like i just am like that's not my skill set and there are people that are better qualified than me let them have the spotlight like them get the money very few people can do stand-up comedy in a special for an hour. I'm just going to do that. Yeah. That's what I train for. That's my sport. Like I don't, you know, people that, you know, go to the Olympics for basketball are just like, I want to be a swimmer. It's like, why not? Why not do the thing that you, you made a promise to yourself and you got good at something and you owe it to these people to keep giving them the, the thing that they kept paying for. They supported That's so me. true though. You guys supported me. Now I'm going to give up. You know, so you guys came to my shows, you bought my tickets, you helped me get better. I'm not all of a sudden you'd be like, yeah, I don't do stand up anymore. I want to be a TV star. I want to be a movie star now. It's like, well, yeah, that's not what we wanted you to do. <laughs> I think but like all of these opportunities are there all of a sudden, like on social, I think like for so many different there, there is like, okay, you, you can now do makeup and you can do your tutorials and you can do your master classes and you can do your styling and like, I think like all of a sudden everything's like opened up. So I feel like everyone feels that like, I mean, I guess at some point everyone does feel like they have a, like a skill set. They just, they just want to put out there. That's yeah. apart from what they do. By the way, this is coming from someone who's 38 years old, who doesn't, is not if I was 22, 25, 28, I'd be like, I'm on fucking everything. And I'm, but I just, I'm, I was like on MySpace. So it was like, I, you know, <laughs> I kind of miss my window to sort of jump on every stage, you know, and I'm a little bit like, I'm going to do what I'm good at. I'm in my groove. I can't chase things that but other people deserve. I think you do what you, I think you still do what you're interested in, like what you'll put the time in for, like even with your skincare like all that stuff you're not by the you're, time i'm done with my skincare doctor. routine it's it's 4 30. so i can't be on all these platforms but, but you're more educated than a lot of people that are doing and skincare I'll come on your podcast and share my wisdom and then you get the money and spread it to your fans and, okay thank you but i also want to get your oils like i want you to make yes. your own yeah. And then I could just buy from you because I have confidence in Wait, you. Actually, what oils do you use? I'm curious now. Grape seed oil, tomato seed oil. Nothing needs to be more than $40, $50. Um, grape seed, tomato seed. Do you like use coconut oil? Uh, coconut oil is, is, is good, but I just, I, I usually, um, it's usually like creamy kind of, and it's just sort of globby. So I just do grape seed, tomato seed. Wait, oh, that sounds great. So you Olive said you're oil. making your own line. Yes. <laughs> Ed and I are working on our own line of oil. You know this more than me. It takes 10 years to get one label made. I don't understand. But you're also a perfectionist. Like so. I, no, I'm really not in this. I'm just like, get, get me something. And it's like, <laughs> it's always an excuse. It made more than $50. He said, that's because our packaging is made of gold. Um, but, uh, cause Benton, is is my sort of guru and understanding people want something special they want something oh excuse me okay oh, Whoa! Hey, hello <laughs> so cute oh, how's it going? he's my little ow oh <laughs> god i got a tail in my eye those are weapons <laughs> oh my god oh and it's like all bone yeah um, legit, legit weapons 
but it's like uh, a whip. <laughs> oh. I miss that. I miss my dogs doing that to me for some reason. I'm like, oh, like, I oh, want yes. that in my life. The trauma. Being whacked <laughs> by, the, by a tail. Also, like, like, watch where you spend your money, you know? Like, spend money in women-owned, black-owned brands. Like, you know, be conscious in the way that you consume because it's going to change, like, the way you feel about yourself, you know? It's like the way you spend your money is how you're um, building your self-esteem, you know? If you go and spend $80 on a eye cream that lasts for three days you just feel like shit you feel like you've been played because you have and you feel bad so to me like i when i'm like oh i got the grapeseed oil or like i'll go on to an expensive uh website like neiman marcus or netta porter or something they'll be like this gorgeous like rainbow cardigan sweater that's 500 dollars," and i'll go oh i want a rainbow cardigan sweater and i'll just go to etsy and google vintage rainbow cardigan sweater and the fucking it'll i'm we're gonna wear it a couple times a year you know, like, and then you get it for 35 bucks and then you get to give money to a vintage store, an independent owned thing. And then you feel good about yourself. And then I'm not like, I just spent $500 on a cardigan. I'm going to spill coffee on and then my dogs are going to piss on. So the satisfaction <laughs> lasts a lot longer than yeah, the Yeah. Like the you got to get ahead of the shame. You got to beat the shame before it gets you, you know? Mm. Well, there's, yeah. there's so much to learn from Whitney. Make sure you guys check out her good for you podcast. Listen Seriously. to her go on Instagram. She is on TikTok, whether she knows it or not. She's there too. And put posting for me. <laughs> well, it's good job, Ben. So she's killing <laughs> it. And then Twitter as well. She's everywhere. You can just follow Whitney. Whitney Cummings, guys. Thank and you. thank you so much, Whitney, for doing this. Like, I mean, yeah. again, like showing up even in when just after treatments and like not feeling so well and you're still here delivering. I mean, no, this everybody breathes some life into me. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank well you. this is fun. I want it. I want it to go on forever. We'll have to. Meanwhile, you, everyone's watching this going, can Amanda and Jacqueline talk about their skincare secrets? <laughs> Cause you guys are fucking glowing angels. And I have makeup on. <laughs> Your face is fucking... No, just, honestly, like, I'm, like, obsessed with your skin. It looks so good. I can't believe you have well, no I'm foundation. I'm 38 and have did tanning beds for five years. Wow. Uh, Wait, you. do you that's, drink or smoke? Then she just went, say thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I don't no. Know. I don't really drink Amanda. You, I drink um, six two six wine um, <laughs> every day, all day. <laughs> yeah. um, that's that's what it is. That's why I'm better <laughs> um, But I don't drink a ton. Uh, I'm I'm a little too like control obsessed. Um, I I drink hard kombucha sometimes. Then I'll have some wine. But mm. I, I don't I don't drink a ton. But that's what I come from. But that's not my go to thing yeah, I, I think that really i think I that helps so i love smoking i fucking love it and when i'm on the last stretch of a script or when i'm like it's the best thing in the world to just chain smoke like i'll chain smoke like a pack of cigarettes in two days and then i won't smoke for a year <laughs> wow like it's your vice it's moderation is not my thing but when I do it, I'll go hard, but I, I can't, it's, it's, I can't, it's another, I can't even find my cell phone. I can't keep track of a lighter and it's so sugar for me. Mine are like out like cookies, chocolate. So yeah, that's, that's a drug. Fine. fine. That's good. It's the stress that you, um, emit worrying about what you're going to eat is actually more aging and worse for you than just eating the bad thing. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. That is really good. Because they always say how like sugar is so aging, but then it's so true actually. Like the more I think like you, like stress, stress is the biggest ager, right? The biggest ager, but also you have to surprise your body. So if you're eating sugar every single day, not great, but it's like, that's why the cheat days work and, and, and stuff like that, which I also think is a kind of disordered eating in my opinion, uh, as someone who's had a lot of it, but yeah, you just have to be um surprising with your body have three meals a day no snacking uh this is just from dr david agus who just anything smart i've said medically just plagiarizing him uh, <laughs> but you can't do it all the time that's all you know it's just like sugar is bad for you it's like okay well everything has sugar in it what are we talking about like there's these these gross generalizations that just make people shut down and be scared and confused 
don't eat any salt. Don't ever eat soy. It's like, well, have it once a week. Have it once a month. Like it's. You know, and they change it so much too. This just shows I know. that, like, everything. I've been eating soy for two years. <laughs> like, it's just like, no, dude, just like, it out. It's moderation. Stop. The stress of it is so much worse. The cortisol deteriorates collagen. So, if you're in the airport, like, I don't know what to eat. There's nothing vegan. There's nothing. Sorry, that's you. Um, uh, <laughs> that don't is me. But I'm just saying it's a good, just eat the banana, eat the whatever it is. So that you're not, I just, I can't waste any more of my life thinking about food. I just, I have too many things I want to do. There's too many things I want to accomplish. Like I was not yeah. put on earth to obsess about food and calories. I did it for 15 years. I did my time, but I look at uh, food as fuel. I ran mm -hmm. this event in today. I don't say food anymore. I say fuel. You know, oh, what, what am I, food is like fat and bad and, and, fuel is i'm like what am i gonna have for fuel today What's fuel is productive Ooh, i love it that is such a good one mm -hmm. food is not Actually, gonna, a word yeah. that works for my brain it's i have a combative relationship with it i'm scared of it i have shame around it amanda are you writing this down fuel. Fuel. food is fuel fuel yeah, <laughs> yeah i can see that what's i can the, see that what's, what should we have for fuel tonight what should we have for fuel <laughs> this afternoon <laughs> i love that that's the amanda thing amanda was being really sneaky about it as well she was like Let's go. <laughs> Let's call it fuel. Cause then I go, oh shit. I'm gonna eat way different if I think about it as fuel than yeah. I think about food. Cause food is like sloppy and indulgent and gluttonous and like ways you makes you feel bad about yourself. Like fuel, okay, now I'm gonna have that, you know, I'm gonna have that, I'm gonna have vegetables, I'm gonna have the juice, I'm gonna have a, you know, I'm not just gonna eat the bullshit, you know? So yeah. it changes. And then I think about myself as how am I gonna feed a kid? How would I why do we feed ourselves trash? But if we had a five-year-old, we'd be like, you have to have this and you have to have this and vegetable and the thing. And then we're adults and we're just like eating fucking bars in the car, like just trash. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's a good one. Okay. You guys have been trying to get off for a while. Let's do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Winnie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she hung up. <laughs> She yeah. Really her. yeah, she's amazing. Thank you guys. That so is so funny. We'll pull a Whitney and make it straightforward and sign off. Thank you guys. Love you. That was crazy. Oh my God. Bye everyone. Thanks Bye. for listening to us on the Feels Good Podcast. I love her so much. Bye. Feels good.